I'm Katrina Foley. I'm your District 2 Supervisor for Orange County. It's great to see some familiar faces there. Uh, and we are um, you know, excited to have our, our, our county team share information with all of you about how to get county contracts. And so hope you're all doing well and surviving our, our latest surge, but um, I think we'll soon be out of this. And uh, Debbie Lumpkin is our chief of staff. She's also our point person in the office for our business uh, recovery and our, um, all of our small business initiatives that we're working really well with the county on. And uh, she's created this business roundtable series where we will be hosting a series of different discussions. Uh, we have another one coming up on August 30th. And we're trying to make sure that the community and the businesses know about what are all the opportunities to partner with the county for your business. And so I will let uh, Debbie say a few words. It's great to see many of you. And go ahead, Debbie. Okay, well, I want to thank you guys for tuning in um, to join us today. We have um, some really great county information and county resources on the phone to share some information about how, you know, how to do business with the county. Um, but what I want to do is encourage all of you that are on the phone, because we have a lot of the chambers and entrepreneur focused organizations, you know, as we have these roundtable meetings, feel free to spread the word. Um, you know, we welcome business owners joining us on these calls as well. Uh, we want to make this like an information, um, you know, funnel, if you will, where we can push information out to, to help businesses recover. Um, and just so you know, um, you know, today we're going to be talking about how to do business with the county. And we're also going to be talking specifically about one of the departments within the county, which is public works. And, you know, what those types of opportunities look like. But next week, um, on the 30th, we are going to have another roundtable. And our guest speaker is going to be Patricia Click, who is on the line with us today. Um, Patricia Click is from the Center at Lindustry, and she is going to be sharing with us the last two rounds of the CARES Act funding. I believe it's rounds eight and nine for cultural institutions and for small businesses. So she's going to be going through, you know, how to apply and get access to those funds. So I really want to implore you guys to um, invite your business owners to join right in here. You can send the link to them and they can hear the information firsthand. So um, with that, I, I guess I'll turn it over um, to Chris. Thank you, Debbie and uh, Supervisor Foley. I appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit about how to do business with the County of Orange. Now, I, I'm getting a message saying host disabled participant screen sharing. So I don't know if you can unlock that. But um, as a matter of fact, every even month, um, the first Thursday of that month, we host a virtual vendor information day session. Uh, it's usually 9, 9 a.m. to about 10, 10 or 10.30. And, um, what we do is we cover a lot of this information. We also have some of our uh, deputy purchasing agents, which are our county buyers from different departments join in on that call and they can um, offer you know, advice. And we have a you know, Q&A session where we do a little forum. And so uh, there we go. Great. Thank you. Let me get this up. And in that session, we, you know, we ask uh, um, businesses to participate with any kind of questions, and uh, it's 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 a very good, you know, engaging um, session. So, just a little FYI on that. All right. So, thank you again for uh, joining the Small Business Roundtable. And uh, what I'm going to cover in this presentation is really. Um, you know, a lot of different aspects on, on the county, on, on our procurement structure and uh, various, uh, actually two, two uh, preferential policies that businesses should be aware of that you can take advantage of as you engage with the county and business. Uh, we'll give you a little snapshot of, of our procurement spend, just so you have an idea of where our, our spend is, is, is going. Uh, we'll also highlight some of our countywide contracts and. Uh, which we refer to as uh, regional cooperative agreements, RCAs for short. 
Um, I'll briefly touch on some solicitation methods and uh, where you can find our, our county bids, uh, as well as how to register as a vendor on our website. And then I'll just uh, quickly uh, go over some keywords and automated notifications that you can leverage uh, in, in our uh, online bidding system. All right, so um, beginning with our vendor information resources, we've, we have a, a website uh, that has um, short little videos. So if anyone ever wants to go back and kind of get a little bit more information on something that perhaps you missed, or uh, you just want to break it up in different uh, pieces, not you know, sit through a whole hour of uh, presentation, all those videos are available on our website. Um, as well as these resources uh, that I'm gonna briefly go over right here. Uh, so the Doing Business with the County of Orange brochure is a helpful brochure that gives you a snapshot of all the information that I'll be covering uh, this, this afternoon. Um, and that's also something you can uh, quickly, you know, send a link to anyone who might be interested in learning more about uh, doing business with the county as well. Uh, we also have our online bidding instructions on there, easy step-by-step -step, uh, instruction that um, helps you, you know, register and, and how to um, search for various uh, solicitations that the county has. Um, we also provide our ethics and public contracting. Um, and we do that because uh, we here at the county procurement office, we really uh, pay uh, careful attention to ensuring that all parties, you know, from our vendors to our our buyers to our departments that they understand the ethics in public contracting because um, ensuring public trust is, is uh, vital to our office. We wanna make sure that we continue to support that and um, guard that. Um, the general terms and conditions, we wanna make sure that any county vendor is not taken by surprise, that they're well-informed as they engage with the county and business. So, uh, before you know, bidding on any uh, sort of solicitation, we provide the, the general terms and conditions as well as the insurance requirements uh, for commodities and capital assets, as well as services and human service contracts, so that the, all, all the information is available. And you can review it. Businesses can you know, prepare for it, uh, any, anything that they need to you know, modify or, 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 or uh, you know, in, in acquire in order to, to bid on a proposal, we want to make sure that uh, vendors are well prepared. Uh, we also provide our electronic fund transfer authorization form, again, just to prepare uh, businesses with. Uh, this is really to uh, support, you know, secure electronic uh, fund transferring. And that is set up by our county auditor controller, a separate uh, department in, here in the county. And so once the form is received by our auditor, auditor controller, they go ahead and uh, issue the vendor a, a code and um, set up their, their, um, their payment. Um, and then lastly, the department procurement contact. So I always like to draw attention here because this is the gold. Uh, this, is, this is where uh, businesses should really you know, print and, and keep it. Um, perhaps somewhere, uh, you know, e easily uh, accessed. So you can contact any department. Um, you can introduce yourself, your, your, your product, your service. And um, that way you can start uh, building that, that relationship with various departments on what their needs are and what service you can provide. So here's a, a quick just overview of our county uh, departments here. Um, as you know, you know, the Board of Supervisors governs uh, all the business here in the County of Orange with respect to these four program areas. And so I just wanted to highlight that uh, the ones in black are those departments that are led by uh, appointed directors, whereas those in red are those that are elected uh, by the county. So um, just a little differentiation there. It's also important to note that each department has unique needs and therefore is responsible for their own procurement. So for example, healthcare agency may need medical supplies and uh, John Wayne Airport may need concession services. 
uh, whereas uh, the social services agency uh, may need toys and bedding and children's clothing for its Orangewood children's home. So our county procurement officer is Maria Perona. And uh, unfortunately, she was unable to join us this morning. So I'm pinch hitting for her. Uh, but the Board of Supervisors is authorized to employ a county procurement officer to perform certain duties on behalf of the county, which includes uh, procuring all services, materials, supplies, furnishings, equipment, and whatever else the county may need uh, to help perform the necessary duties to better serve the residents of Orange County. And so the county procurement officer delegates the purchasing authority to over 250 per deputy purchasing agents, or as we refer to them as DPAs. And the DPAs are then trained by uh, our office uh, who are then deputized to perform in the county procurement officer's capacity, which includes conducting the solicitation process and issuing of contracts. And because each department has unique needs, as I mentioned, uh, they're responsible for their own procurement. Um, so the County of Orange operates under a decentralized procurement uh, model. And so I just wanted to highlight quickly, you know, what our office does so you have an idea um, our office implements and enforces policies set by the board, uh, which in turn, the office must develop more specific procedures on how the policy will be implemented. Uh, we ensure solicitations are done in a fair, open, cost-effective and ethical competitive process. And we do that by ensuring that we provide training and certification to all our DPAs uh, to ensure that best practices and professional standards are being upheld. Our office also conducts annual compliance reviews to ensure that DPAs are complying with county policy and procedures and the procurement of goods and services. Uh, our office also assesses commonly used goods and services across the county where uh, regional cooperative agreements or RCAs can be implemented. And then the same way we administer the acquisition of things, we also administer the disposition of things through our county surplus program. And then uh, we also administer our formal online bidding system, which uh, I'll touch on a little later in this presentation. Uh, we serve an advisory role to the various departments on how to best procure goods, services, and equipment. Uh, we also administer the environmentally preferable purchasing policy. Try saying that twice as fast and uh, implements guidelines for green alternative procurement where practical. And then lastly, we administer the county's preference policies, which are the Orange County Local Small Business Policy and the Disabled Veteran Business Enterprise Policy. So I just wanna highlight the uh, OCLSB policy uh, real quick. So to be certified as a local small business by the County of Orange, uh, really two requirements need to be met. It, the business must be local and it must be small. And so local means really maintaining its principal center of operations here in the uh, County of Orange. And it has to have a business address located in the County of Orange that is not a post office box, uh, or we can have a, a valid uh, business license or certificate of occupancy you know, issued by the county, uh, by an Orange County city, or any other documentation acceptable to the County of Orange. Um, the other part of that coin is the small part. Uh, so the small requirement is that the business must be certified as a small business by the state of California Department of General Services. And those requirements must be valid at the time of the bid or proposal submittal. And just so, just to, provide a little bit further information. Some of those requirements by the state uh, include uh, the business must be principally located here in California. Uh, the business must have 100 or fewer employees and it must have a, an average annual gross receipts of $15 million or less over the last three tax years. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, Oh, you might be answering it. Is this where you would go to get the certification from the state? Yes, yes. Okay. So you can, uh, no, not a problem. So um, yeah, to participate, uh, a firm can obtain uh, information by accessing the, the county website at that address and um, you can verify there. 
So now for the DVBE policy, our, our veteran business enterprises, um, to participate, the business must meet two requirements, um, must be certified as a disabled veteran business enterprise by the state, uh, again, the Department of General Services, and the business must complete and sign the DVBE affirmation form, um, which must be uh, submitted with the solicitation response. Now for a quick snapshot of our county procurement spend uh, for fiscal year 2019-2020. Um, as you can see, we, we spent um, 1.56 billion in um, various ways. Uh, so beginning on the left-hand side in green, uh, architecture and engineering uh, contracts valued at you know, 74 million and um, you know, 7.8 million on the far right. Uh, those are CalCard expenses. Those are smaller dollar expenses, which I'll actually point out in, in, a, in a bit here in the slides. But um, just to kind of give you a, a, an idea of where our spend is. And I can provide these slides to you um, uh, afterwards. I'll, I'll, I can send it over to Debbie. Now to highlight some of our countywide contracts or otherwise known as RCAs. Uh, as I mentioned, these regional cooperative agreements are issued uh, for commonly used goods and services across the county. Um, the county consists of 22 departments, as I mentioned, so for which many, if not all, uh, are buying some of the same things. And so RCAs eliminate the duplication of efforts across the county departments for these commonly used goods and services, while also leveraging the county's economies of scale, so basically getting that uh, greater quantity for that lower per unit cost. And our office handles these. And so as you can see by the start and end date, and these contracts span over several years. And so the county will either rebid, renew, or extend the contract by that end date. So just to kind of give you an idea of what those RCAs include, there's a, a list of one through 30, and Here's another list of 31 through 60. And so these, uh, if you provide goods, services, or equipment in any of these categories, it would be a good idea. I recommend to, to make a note and, uh, of the end date and post a reminder on your calendar to check back on our website uh, to see if there's any potential RCA solicitations that you might wanna bid on and be included. So now for the solicitation methods, uh, we'll go over the informal uh, and the informal uh, right after this. But informal solicitations are those that involve a lower dollar threshold. So as you can see, commodities valued at $10,000 or less require only one written or oral quote. Uh, services valued at $50,000 or less require one written quote. And capital assets uh, valued between five and $25,000 require two quotes, written or oral. And so I'm gonna provide two tips here. Uh, the first being, uh, because departments may, may maintain a vendor interest list, uh, vendors uh, can and should uh, reach out to department contacts to introduce themselves and their product or, your, or, or their service. Um, so that the department can include that business on their, on their list. Um, secondly, the second tip here is uh, we also encourage uh, uh, sorry, vendors uh, to register in our online bidding system, not only to view and respond to Orange County solicitations, but also to help buyers when they might not have a lead. Uh, maybe they don't have one on their list or maybe they don't um, maintain a list. Um, that would help them find you know, the, the appropriate vendor. So being on that online bidding system does help in more ways than one. On the flip side, the formal bidding method is for larger dollar thresholds that require formal posting on our online bidding system. And so as you can see there, commodities valued at $25,001 and up services valued at $50,001 and up, 
and capital assets valued at $25,001 and up all require formal written solicitation that is advertised on our county's online bidding system. And so these uh, formal biddings uh, take one of these uh, three forms or methods in our formal solicitations, beginning with the most simplistic invitation for bid. So in this solicitation method, uh, this is when clear specifications can be written and uh, in acquiring the goods, services, or, or equipment. So for example, a department may need X number of widgets. Um, it's clear, it's uh, understood. And so then the award is based on uh, the lowest responsible, uh, sorry, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. The more complicated one is a request for proposal. So in this method, it's used when a basic competitive bidding process is not feasible. So in this example, it might include uh, a department might want uh, an information system that produces a certain type of report. So they know the end goal, um, but they don't know necessarily how to get to that end goal. And so the, requ the request is to propose a solution, uh, uh, a plan on how that uh, will be achieved. And so then the award is going to be based on the highest ranking proposer from an established evaluation criteria. And then the most complicated one is the two-step sealed bidding uh, process or method. And this method permits a preliminary evaluation based on a proposal's technical merit and the qualifications of the bidder or proposer. And the second part is a final v evaluation based on price. So in this example, I like to use uh, perhaps like the county wants to do an economic forecast of the region. So in this regard, uh, in this example, you might want uh, the, the, the county might look at uh, the uh, consultants or, or businesses uh, expertise, uh, maybe their, their educational background, their years of experience, um, how many times uh, you know, they've, they've done a similar economic forecast. That would be the first step. The second step might be uh, evaluating uh, the, the engagement um, as a whole, you know, their price or perhaps the report, the end report um, price as well. So just to give you an idea of what that two-step uh, would look like. Okay, so now some tips uh, when responding to county solicitation. Uh, we encourage that all um, businesses read the solicitation package carefully and you make note of any issues, any questions you might have during that Q&A period to, to make sure that you post it on our online bidding system to request any clarifications uh, before submitting a solicitation response. And then lastly, making sure that that solicitation response is submitted by the due date listed on the solicitation because uh, late bids will not be accepted. All right, so all our active formal solicitations are posted, um, as I mentioned, on our own uh, online county uh, bidding system, uh, which can always be reached by clicking on the open bids link. Uh, found near the top of the Orange County Procurement website, which is uh, olb.ocgov.com forward slash bids. And in order to view, download, and respond to any of these uh, solicitation listed on this page, you'll need to register as a vendor and to register you first click the register link found on the open bids uh, page and then click continue to the external page uh, when it appears. This will take you to this website uh, of our third party provider that houses all formal county solicitations. And on this page, you click the register for free button to begin the registration process. And then you can open and view a technical step-by-step -step PDF guide 
which I uh, mentioned in the very beginning is one of our resources. Uh, free, easy, easy to follow step-by-step -step guide on how to uh, register as a vendor. And so uh, by clicking that step-by-step uh, -step instructions link found on the Opens Bid page, you can also access in addition to where we have it on our resource page. And during registration, you, you'll be prompted to select keywords related to your business. Uh, please note that these keywords determine what notifications you will receive whenever any agency from within th the third party's network posts a solicitation. Now we recommend typing uh, the County of Orange as the first of three keywords that you're required to provide as part of the registration process. And once you've completed the registration, you can always change the keywords and commodity codes you have uh, selected by clicking on the bid profile from the account menu. And your notification settings will be automatically updated. And from this page, you can also choose to stop receiving automated notifications by clicking on the toggle button as shown. And if I know this may be a little bit much, you're like thinking, oh, I, how am I gonna remember all this? Again, we have our videos on, online that go through all these steps so you can you know, pause and you know, uh, do what you need to do in, your, in the system and then go back. Or you can also reach out to us and we're, we're happy to help. And so for any technical questions related to the actual platform, uh, simply open the account menu and you can click support and use the contact information uh, provided there. And as always, uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome to email us at cpo at ocgov.com and we'd be happy to assist you with anything. And with that, that concludes my session. If you have any questions for me, I'm happy to take them. If not, we can, Debbie, you can take it over. Okay, I'll, I'll look for, it looks like we do have one hand up and it's um, Julianne Harkness from Costa Mesa. Yes, hi, I might've missed this part. Um, I just was curious is if the RCA contract list that you showed us that's showing the start and the end dates of all the contracts that are currently underway, is that information that is accessible to the general public so that they can go on and see when those are all gonna be ending? Is that on the website as well? Yeah, that's on our website. Um, and I'll, I'll, I can provide it to you as well. So um, actually, I'll go ahead and I think I can include my um, email address in the chat here. Great, uh, thank you. And then you can email me, absolutely. The other thing is, if you could, Chris, could you um, reduce your slides there? Sure. Um, the other thing is we are going, we're recording this and we'll be sending out a link with the video. And so for our uh, chamber partners that are on the call, we hope that you'll send it out and that information will get out to your members. You know, um, I know I don't see any other hands up, but I also want to give um, Joseph a chance to, to chat. Joseph is from our public works department here in Orange County, and maybe he can tell us just a, a little bit about, um, you know, what's going on in public works contract wise. What are some of the things that um, vendors should think about and consider? Okay, yes. So uh, good afternoon and thank you for the invitation. So piggybacking off of uh, Chris, the number one thing that I would recommend is to register in, in uh, Periscope, formerly BitSync, but uh, Periscope holding, register. Um, so if anything else that, that you take away from this, this event, um, number one thing is to register. Um, everything formal that goes out from the county, it will go through our online bidding system, Periscope. So that's the first thing that you should do. Um, the second thing is, is to understand that we as, as public agencies, uh, we follow strict guidance in terms of how we procure items. Uh, so for commodities and services, we follow the contract policy manual, which is governed by Chris's agency, 
um, CPO. And then for our a &E, our architect and engineering and our construction uh, contracts, those are governed by our design and construction policy manual. Um, there's, there's nuance difference, but the main thing, nuts and bolts is construction projects, AE, AE projects governed by uh, design and construction, and then uh, commodities and services by the CPM, the contract policy manual. And in both of those, they're available online uh, at our website. You'll see the full scope of um, everything kind of Chris was discussing in terms of how we actually do our solicitations, um, the, the policies in terms of uh, the thresholds and what it requires. So if it's a service under 50,000, all we need is one quote. If it's a service over 50,000, then you need to formally solicit. Um, if vendors know that, then it helps them understand, you know what, I know an end user, um, my services are only $30,000, that's where they can start doing their, their networking, um, and, and they have a better, clear understanding of how to get opportunities, uh, because there are other opportunities outside of that formal solicitation, but it's just understanding what the actual rules are. Um, as a procurement manager, I'm hands off when it, when it comes to that interaction um, in terms of businesses talking with end users. Um, when it gets to, to my group, I say, hey, we are following the rules. Um, this, this is what it is. But if our end users have a need and they have a client or they have a, a vendor that supports it and it fits in line of the rules, then we go forward with it. Um, one, one difference I would say with the, with the CPM, the, the contract policy manual and the design and construction are the preference programs. So as of right now, our local and small business preference program and our disabled veteran business uh, enterprise preference program, those are both related to our commodities and services uh, contracts. Um, however, we still encourage uh, DVBEs, small local businesses, MBEs, WBEs, we encourage all that on all of our projects. Uh, so still, main thing, register, 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 so you're notified. Um, what else? Um, I have a, a lot of, uh, I actually did some, some matchmaking events this morning, and a lot, of, a lot of vendors ask, how do we learn about opportunities? Uh, so for public works, most of our architect and engineering work we do that on using on-call contracts. Essentially, those are big umbrella contracts for a broad discipline, let's say civil engineering, where we have larger, about 1.5, one to two million dollar contracts set up for you know a three year period. Um, that's how we mainly do our business. Um, so once we solicit for those services, that contract is good for three years. We can renew it again after that for, for two years. Um, but for firms that are interested in getting in the door, they wanna know, hey, when is it coming back out again? So if you go to our website and you click on the public works page um, and you hover over the OCPW link, there's a little button that says capital improvement projects. And there is a link to an architect and engineering design list of all of our on-call contracts. It shows the discipline, it shows the date that it expires, and it shows whether or not it's renewable. So that's a good way of, of, of somewhat learning what our uh, projected project list would be. Keep in mind, we all go off of uh, county need. So it's not guaranteed that that discipline will be needed in the future, um, but that's a good list to start from. Um, Another tip in terms of construction. Uh, so we have a seven year CIP project. And on that same link, link, there's also a list that says projected projects. And it's essentially for the next seven years, we kind of map out our major CIP projects. Uh, so whether you're doing construction or design, if you look at that list, they actually have it broken down into uh, for each individual project, when they're planning on doing the design for it, the construction for it, um, 
So all that information is in there. It also gives you the, the projected delivery method. Uh, so you can kind of uh, gauge when those projects will be coming out and then uh, prepare to either solicit or you know, respond to a bid based on those. Um, I guess the last thing that, that, I'll, that I'll share before we open it up for questions, because I know we have about what, 20 more minutes. Um, in terms of the work that we do in public works, we have our, of course, project specific. Uh, we have our large you know, design build and construction manager at risk projects, which could be you know, 30 some million dollars. Uh, but our real bread and butter, a lot of those projects are our job order contracts. Those are annual contracts, so they essentially expire every every year, and we solicit for them again. Uh, but that's where we do a lot of our work. And again, going back to the very beginning, in order to to know about those, you have to register, register, register. Uh, so so make sure you register in Periscope Holding, aka uh, BitSync. If you have any issues setting up your account, like Chris said, they have a, a very helpful support desk. Uh, where they can help you set up your your job codes and your areas um, uh, but that are those are the main i guess areas unless there's some some questions that i can go into some more detail hey, I'm, I'm looking i don't um see any questions as of yet but i'm sure you know the brain is is you know cranking away there so i'm sure we may have some questions later oh wait bill you have a question well i didn't i don't know if this is um necessarily opening up another vet avenue that, that you weren't necessarily going to go here, but I'll throw it out. Um, I, I represent two disabled veteran business organizations um, and my own company, which is one. And so is are you planning on doing kind of a deeper dive as to what the preference is and what how that would work? Um, um, or in, in maybe if I'm the only one in the room, you know, it could be done off, offline, but uh, um, you know, there, there's, we're, we're trying to generate a lot of interest in that. We have a couple of events that are coming up with our veteran businesses, small businesses, um, mostly registered with the Department of General Services, having the certifications, everything in place. But where's, you know, frankly, where's the beat? Where's the reality to this um, would be helpful. Thank you. You know, uh, one thing, um, I know Maria is not on the line, um, but one thing that I, I would mention, and I had a note, actually, I was going to mention it to everybody, because I know we have a lot of chambers and entrepreneur, you know, focus organizations on the phone. And I know you're used to um, dealing with organizations, companies, businesses, agencies that have a more kind of enforceable program, like a measurable program. And I know the county is just embarking, you know, on launching this initiative. And so I think they've made some really, you know, great strides of having the registration portal and the vendor day. But, you know, we are at the infancy stages. Um, but one thing that that you do, that we do have here at the county that may be um, that doesn't exist in other areas, you know, all the contracting opportunities come before the board for approval. Um, and through since we've been here, we've always we always ask questions like even though there isn't a, a program that um, forces you to subcontract or anything like that. We always ask the question about local diverse and disadvantaged business involvement. And there is a lot of it going on, even though it's not a requirement. Um, and so I'm very excited to see actually, you know, how much traction we can get without it being a formal requirement. But, you know, again, the, I don't want to speak for the county, but I know they are in their um, beginning stages of it. But we can make sure we definitely take this information back and, you know, share it with Maria and so forth. Um, but and I don't mean to cut it short, but um, we do have a, another call, press can conference. I, at. Can I ask, can I just say one thing? I know sure. we have to get off. Um, uh, but just to answer Bill's question more directly, why don't we arrange, uh, Debbie, why don't we arrange to have a very specific business roundtable that's just about veterans? Um, let's let's work on that. And then maybe I see Karma Lacey is on our call. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and Karma is does an amazing job for the county working with our veterans businesses and the veterans hiring program. So maybe we can do another one um, that is just veteran specific. Okay, and then uh, Debbie, I wanted to make sure that we shared um, 
about your upcoming uh, August 30. And I think Michael has a slide ready to go for that. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, we will definitely get this flyer out to you guys. So hopefully you can send it out to your membership and, and come next week. And I'm sure this won't be the last time we talk to Chris and, and Joseph as well. <laughs> right. Thank you, Chris and Joseph. Super helpful information. And uh, thank you to the chamber partners for being on the call today. And we would love your input on how we can get more of our businesses to participate because I just think this is such invaluable information that we're getting out. And there are um, many opportunities that people just don't know about. So if you have input, please share it with Debbie. Uh, Michael, do, do you have ability to share your screen? Let me see if I can do it. Um, let's see. <laughs> I'm not sure how to share my screen. <laughs> Just go down to the bottom. It says share screen. Ah, here we go. Okay. There you go. Look at that. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Is so that it? <laughs> So Debbie, you want to share about this upcoming? Sure, event? sure. So kind of like I mentioned um, in the beginning, you know, we want to really make sure that all of you chambers and entrepreneur organizations are here uh, next Monday with us. But also, I think uh, the biggest value is to get as many businesses on the line as possible. Um, we have Patricia Click of um, the Center at Lindustry. And they're going to be going through uh, rounds eight and nine with us um, and how to apply and how to get access to that funding. Um, so they are, I think, the administrator of the CARES Act grant funding. So it should be a really good session. So I'll make sure uh, Michael and I will get this flyer out to you guys so you could push it out. Social media, the more the merrier. We've got to rebound from this. Great. Thank you. And thank you, Debbie, for being um so passionate about helping with these uh, small business supports programs and the business roundtable series. And we really just enjoy the partnership with all of our chamber partners and our entrepreneurial groups. Um, we look forward to many more of these uh, business roundtables. If you have suggestions for future uh, topics, please share those with Debbie and everybody. Just I wanna leave you with, um, couple things I'm going to be doing. I do COVID uh, briefings most every day. Uh, I have one at 2 p.m. And today on our call, we will be having um, Dr. Timothy Korber, who is the Medical Director of Emergency Services for Fountain Valley Regional Hospital, Dr. Cynthia Cork, who is um, obstetrics and gynecology specialist from Fountain Valley, and then Eric Fallis from the uh, Coast Community College District talking about what's happening on campus as relates to vaccines. So we are doing really well here in Orange County in terms of our vaccinations. And many of our, our cities are moving into the closer to 70% vaccinated. We've got to get to about 85% in order to get herd immunity so we can all get together and enjoy our best lives again. So thank you all, wear your mask, enjoy your, uh, your rest of your day. Thank you to our amazing county team for helping and being supportive of, of uh, our series here. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.